Allah says, وَقَالُوا And they said, referring back to the disbelievers, the disbelievers and the mushrikun, referring back to them, they said that Ar Rahman has taken a child. These people actually said, Ar Rahman has taken a child, Ar Rahman has offspring. Allah in ayah number 89 reprimands them and says, Laqad, no doubt, most definitely, Jitum, you have come with. Laqad Jitum, no doubt, most definitely. How could you do something? How could you say something like that? How could you bring something so horrible? Shay'an, something, Shay'an, Iddan, something so wildly inappropriate. It then means something that is inappropriate and it's so inappropriate that it induces or it demands a response from people. Ayah number 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Takadu samawatu. You people have done something so horrible, it's causing a riot amongst the creation of Allah. When people say things like, Allah has a son, Allah has children, and they make shirk of this nature and this level, the other creation of Allah are appalled. The other creation of Allah are infuriated. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he says that all of the creation of Allah are fearful of committing shirk of Allah. All the creation of Allah are appalled and infuriated at the act of shirk. And there's only one creation of Allah that has, whether you call it the audacity or whether you call it the obliviousness, the stupidity to be able to do shirk with Allah and that is subhanAllah the human being. That's that same idea that's mentioned in Surah Tutin. The human being can be the best of the best, or the human being can be the worst of the worst. So Ibn Abbas says that the creation of Allah cannot stand the fact that human beings do shirk with Allah. And so what does Allah say? That the sky would completely rip apart due to the shirk that is being done. And the earth would split open and swallow everybody on it out of fury. And the mountains would come crashing down when something huge falls and it falls so hard that it not only does it make noise, but it kind of shakes the ground. You know, so imagine like a building being demolished. When a building is demolished, it shakes the ground around it. And when it falls and you see that dust flying in all directions for miles, and it's just this chaotic scene, the mountains will come crashing down. So the, the sky is close to just wanting to rip apart and all types of things come raining down, falling down from the sky upon this human being. Then shakul ardu, the earth wants to just split open and start swallowing these people in. The mountains just want to come crashing down and demolish this human being and everything that this huma, human being lives with. The creation of Allah is so infuriated. How could you do this? The heavens and the earth and the mountains are just so also angry with this human being. You are abusing such an unbelievable trust and amana from Allah. Such a gift from Allah is being squandered away by you. This creation of Allah doesn't even want to provide that ceiling and that protection. The sky is a protective ceiling. The sky says, I don't even want to protect you anymore. The earth has been put to the service of the human being. Walk around on it, grow stuff on it, build stuff on it, do whatever you want with it. The mountains are there as pegs. That the mountains have been put on the earth so that this earth does not shift around with you on it. So all this creation of Allah that is serving this human being, says that we are just disgraced to even be serving this type of a creation of Allah. Who would disrespect and disobey Allah to this extent and this level. But then finally, what do we realize? We see shirk going on all around. We see Allah being disobeyed all around. Is the sky ripping open? Raining down fire on the people? Is the earth swallowing the people whole? Are the mountains coming crashing down onto people? At the end of the day, they are still so obedient to Allah that while they would like to and they seek permission from Allah, Oh Allah, let us just tear down on these people. Let us crush these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no. And they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the T. And in that in and of itself is another lesson. Oh human being, look at this creation of Allah. Look how obedient they are. Learn something. Ayah number 91. Why are the heavens and the earth and the mountains so infuriated? Why is all this creation of Allah so angry with this human being? Because they called for Ar-Rahman waladan. Again, you have the word Ar-Rahman. The attribute of Allah, Ar-Rahman. Allah being referred to as Ar-Rahman. And it's being mentioned here again that Allah is Ar-Rahman. He's the one that is so abundantly merciful. He has showered his mercy upon these people. And look what these people still do. They still actually go and call out to someone else or something else and say that is the son of Allah, that are, those are the daughters of Allah, those are the associates of Allah. Ayah number 92. And it is completely inappropriate. 
It is not befitting in any way, shape, or form at all for Ar Rahman that he would take a child. That not only have these people attributed a child to Allah, but the clarification is being made that this is completely unfitting Allah. Ayah number 93, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No one exists, not a single thing exists, not a single person exists in the heavens and the earth, except that he or she will come to Ar Rahman. That they will come. You cannot deny the fact that they will come. They will come and they will have to come. How will they come to Ar Rahman? In servitude, in slavery, as slaves. And this is implicating everyone, each and every single person. So those who in this life and in this world realize that they are the slaves of Allah, those people will, I mean, these people will come willingly. They live the life of being a slave of Allah. They'll be pleased to be presented before Allah as slaves of Allah. But then there were also some people in this dunya, in this world, who did not live with this mindset of being a slave of Allah. And guess what? Even these people will on this day have to show up as slaves of Allah. And so you, we best do it now in this dunya because it will make it a lot easier on that day. When it says each and every single person will come as a slave of Allah on that day, that's also making a refutation of that same idea of the Yahud saying that Uzair is the son of Allah, the Christian saying that Isa al Masih is the son of Allah, the, the Mushrikun saying the daughters are the Banat of Allah, saying no, 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 no. There is no Ibnullah, there is no Bintullah. Each and every single person will be Abdullah, Abdur Amatullah. Every single person, they will all be Ibadullah, they will all come as slaves of Allah. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, most definitely, no doubt, He has fully rounded them up. Everybody's been rounded up. Everybody's on the roster. Everybody's been accounted. And yeah, nobody's getting away. And then each and every little thing about them will be counted. So not only have they all, they, have they all been rounded up, but every little thing about them will be counted. And so now this is referring to what they said, what they did, their actions, their deeds, their disbelief, their shirk, their good deeds, their prayers, their iman, their a'mal, whatever it is, good or bad, every little thing that anyone ever did, everything is accounted for. Whoever did a simple thing of good, the smallest amount of good will see it, whoever did the smallest amount of bad will see it. So not only have they been rounded up, have they been put on the roster and fully accounted for, but everything they did has already been taken completely into account. There's a full detailed record of everything they've done. And I've talked about many, multiple times about that book of deeds and that record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, each and every single one of them will come to Him. Yawm al-Qiyamati, on the day of judgment. Individually, individually. And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. May Allah give us all the ability to practice everything we've said and heard. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nasaghfiruka wa natawwilaik.